afternoon, Malaysia, coming to you live from Angkasa Puri. This is Updates at Noon, and I'm Rene Fong. And making the headlines today, collaboration with other parties is to be decided by Barisan Nasional. Biden hails U.S. midterm vote as good day for democracy. Prasarana Malaysia Berhad Prasarana has added 20 free feeder buses for affected commuters following the closure of 16 light rail transit LRT train stations between Klanajaya and Ampang Park beginning yesterday. Press Sarana through a statement said that the number of feeder buses has now reached over 100 to accommodate passengers on five routes involving LRT Line 1 Aradamansara Station, Pasaseni Station, Line 2 Aradamansara Station, Klanajaya Station, Line 3 Klanajaya Station, Pasaseni Station, Line 4 Pasaseni Station, Masjid Jame Station, and Line 5 Masjid Jame Station, Datuk Kramat Station. It said the move was made following the cooperation from Smart Slango. Prasarana further noted that they would also station 80 personnel at the relevant stations to facilitate passenger movement. It said that Rapid Rail will provide free fare for each day of service disruption to Klanajaya Line LRT users and a detailed information will be announced soon. It said the status of the Klanajaya Line would be regularly updated on its social media channels and mass media. The LRT service between the Klanajaya and Ampang Park stations has been suspended for seven days since 6 a.m. yesterday for passenger safety reasons and time needed to identify the cause of the service disruption. A bus carrying about 60 university students was believed to have skidded and overturned in Jalan Slim Lama, Tanjung Malim, yesterday evening. Malim Police Chief Superintendent Mohammad Hasni Mohammad Nasir said police received a call at about 7pm regarding the incident. Elaborating further through a statement, the Mualim Police Chief said the accident occurred after the Kota Malim Prima Junction and preliminary investigations found that 11 passengers, including the driver, suffered minor injuries and were taken to Slim River Hospital for treatment. He said the cause of the incident is still under investigation and any updates will be informed soon. Meanwhile, Tanjong Malim Fire and Rescue Station Chief Muhammad Zairul Fahmi Muhammad Nazari, when contacted by the media said the fire brigade had gone to the scene for rescue work. In an updated statement later, Superintendent Muhammad Hasni said preliminary investigations found that the incident was believed to have occurred due to a burst tyre when the bus was travelling from University Pendidikan Sultan Idris Upsi, Sultan Idris campus, to the Sultan Azlan Shah campus. Several photos and videos of the overturned bus went viral on social media and they were also uploaded on Facebook. Facebook by Barisan National candidate for the Tanjong Malim parliamentary seat, Datuk Dr. Ma Hang Sun, who happened to pass by the area. The decision to forge cooperation with any other parties if Barisan Nasional BN was unable to form the new government after the 15th general election, GE15, will be a decision made by the coalition and not by any individual. Prime Minister Kam Amno Vice President Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said this includes the possibility of BN collaborating with various other political parties. Commenting further on the matter, the Premier said such a big decision like this must be made by the party, not any individual. Meanwhile, on the rumours that 18 November is to be announced as a special public holiday and that the salary for civil servants will be paid on 17th November, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the matter would be announced soon. He said the matter, though, has been viral on social media. He requested the Rakyat to wait for an official announcement regarding the matter. Earlier, the Premier went on a walkabout 
about and met with the people in Durian Tunggal. Also present were Malacca Chief Minister Datuk Sri Sulaiman Mod Ali and BN candidate for Alugaja Shahril Sufian Hamdan. Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa in his effort to help Barisan Nasional BN candidates to campaign has urged voters to give their support to young candidates fielded by the coalition in the 15th general election GE15. Tan Sri Anwar, who is also the Ketre Amno division head, said the selection of young candidates is a good approach to showcasing their leadership potential. Tan Sri Anwar said nominating fresh faces as a candidate may be interpreted as an disadvantage, but looking back, the minister himself was 28 years old when he was nominated as a candidate and was able to gain so much experience by serving so long. He also said that nominating fresh faces is also a sign of being looking to the future to groom young people who have lots of potential. The minister said this at a ceremony to hand over devices in conjunction with the Kluaga Malaysia Digital Economic Centre Paddy Family Day with the community at Felda Lura Bilut yesterday. He was with joined by Wong Siu Man, who is BN's candidate for the Bilut State Legislative Assembly seat. In the GE15, Wong will be challenged by Muhammad Shokri Mahamud, Pejuang, Datuk Sri Chandra Balabeda, Perikatan Nasional, and Lee Chin Chen, Pakatan Harapan. Police confiscated contraband cigarettes worth 11.5 million ringgit in separate raids on 5th November around Negeri Sembilan. The three-hour operation was conducted by a team of officers and personnel from Bukit Aman's special branch in Nilai, Rahang and Senawang. State Police Chief Deputy Commissioner Ahmad Zafir Yusuf in a statement said in the first raid, police stopped a lorry in Taman Bukit Amas in Jalan Seremban Tampin at about 3 a.m. Upon inspection, they discovered 120 boxes containing illicit cigarettes, two backpacks, two mobile phones, several keys and a receipt book. In another operation at about 4.15 a.m. of the same day, police seized 225 boxes containing various brands of cigarettes from another lorry at Kilometre 227 of North South Expressway. In the third operation, they confiscated another 250 boxes from a lorry at car park lot in Jalan Taman Commercial, Senawang 4. The case is being investigated under Section 135, Subsection 1, Subsection D of Customs Act, which carries a fine of between 10 to 20 times of the customs duty or 50 to 200,000 ringgit, whichever is the greater amount. Bank Muamalat Malaysia Berhad and Philip Capital Group Malaysia are targeting an investment of 100 million ringgit within five years through Sharia compliant online private managed accounts and unit trust funds. Director of Retail Banking Zuri Rahimi Zainal Abidin said members of the public can invest with a minimum value of 5,000 ringgit with offer on its digitally sophisticated investment platform. Jika kita melihat kepada private managed account, sebelum ini ianya hanya uh, mampu, uh, pelaburan ini mampu dibuat oleh uh, high net worth customer di mana mereka yang mempunyai kadar berpendapatan tinggi dan mereka yang sudah biasa membuat pelaburan. So sekarang ni melalui uh, digital platform ni, uh, we can just by call, by uh, doing the transaction online. Speaking after the launch of the private managed accounts, an agreement signing ceremony between Bank Muamalat and Philip Capital Group Malaysia recently, Zuri Rahimi said as of 7th November, the new investment products have already collected 1.2 million ringgit during its two weeks pre launch period. Taiwan looks forward to Britain supporting its CPTPP bid. 
U.S. President Joe Biden on Wednesday hailed a good day for democracy after a surprisingly strong performance in midterm elections, with Republicans inching toward a slim majority in only one chamber of Congress. A video posted to Biden's Twitter page shows him congratulating several Democrats on their projected midterm election wins as results come in on election night. Biden acknowledged voters' frustration but said the overwhelming majority of Americans supported his economic agenda after the election, in which Republicans hammered him over stubbornly high inflation and some questioned the legitimacy of his election two years ago. It was also an underwhelming night for Donald Trump, who was counting on a big Republican showing to boost another White House run. In addition to seeing several of his high-profile candidates lose. Trump also saw his main rival for the Republican presidential nomination in 2024, Ron DeSantis, notch up a thumping victory to remain governor of Florida. Republicans appear to be on track to reclaim the 435-member House for the first time since 2018, but by a mere handful of seats. An election drubbing would have surely raised questions on whether Biden should run again in 2024, but instead he did better than his two Democratic predecessors, Barack Obama or Bill Clinton, who both took a hammering in their first midterms. Asked about his plans at Wednesday's press conference, Biden said it was still his intention to run again, but that he would decide for sure early next year. God love you. Taiwan hopes to sign a trade deal with Britain and deepen cooperation with the newly formed government. President Tsai Ing-wen told the British minister visiting Taipei yesterday in defiance of Chinese demands such trips stop. During a meeting with Minister of State for Trade Greg Hans at the presidential office in Taipei, Tsai thanked Britain for its long-term support of Taiwan's international participation and peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. We are targeting the Taiwan views Britain as an important democratic partner and has been heartened by its concern over recent Chinese military exercises near the island and support for its participation in international organizations, most of which Taiwan is excluded from due to China's opposition. Britain has no formal diplomatic ties with Taiwan, but the two have close economic and informal relations and Britain maintains a de facto embassy in Taipei. Japan strongly condemned North Korea's latest missile firing on Wednesday and called Pyongyang's repeated launches absolutely unacceptable. The missile flew at an altitude of up to 50 kilometers and covered a range of 250 kilometers. Japan's defense minister, Yasukazu Hamada, told reporters on Wednesday, adding that the government has lodged a strong protest with North Korea via diplomatic channels through Beijing. え、Japan's Coast Guard said the ballistic missile appeared to have fallen into the sea minutes after the launch was reported. Wednesday's launch came after South Korea concluded an analysis of a North Korean missile that landed near South Korean waters for the first time last week.
Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu ordered Moscow's troops to withdraw from the city of Kherson in southern Ukraine, which Ukrainian forces have been advancing on for weeks. During a televised meeting, Shoigu told Russia's commander in Ukraine, Sergei Sorovokin, to begin to pull out troops. The commander had proposed the difficult decision of pulling back from Kherson and setting up defences on the left bank of the Dnipro River. Kherson city was the first urban hub captured by Russia during its special military operation and the only regional capital controlled by the Russians since the offensive began on 24th February. Ukraine's forces have for weeks been capturing villages en route to the city near the Black Sea and Kremlin-installed leaders in Kherson have been pulling out civilians. A Ukrainian victory in the Black Sea region would cut off the land bridge that the Kremlin established from Russia to the Crimea, the peninsula which Moscow annexed in 2014. It would also return Ukraine important access to the Sea of Azov and leave Russian President Vladimir Putin with little to show from a campaign that has turned him into a paria in the eyes of the West. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that Ukrainian forces were gradually moving forward in the region. In his nightly video statement, Zelensky did not give details of advances in the south of the country. He said any advances were hard fought and stressed the need for caution rather than celebration. Fighting resumed in the Democratic Republic of Congo between the military and armed group M23, residents told AFP, a day after many people fled rebel-held territory being bombarded by military jets. Residents told AFP they had heard the sounds of more fighting by the evening after a tense but quieter day. Officials said that the DRC's military used newly deployed jets to bombard M23 positions in the east of the country as some residents fled across the border. A mostly Congolese Tutsi group, the M23 first leapt to prominence in 2012, briefly capturing the main city in eastern DRC, Goma, before being driven out. As fighting has escalated, the town of Rugari is thought to be near the current front lines, 30 kilometers from Goma. The US and meanwhile said that at least 188,000 people had fled their villages since 20th October, the start of the new M23 offensive, and at least 16,500 have taken refuge in neighboring Uganda. After lying dormant for years, M23 took up arms again in late 2021 claiming the DRC had failed to honour a pledge to integrate them into the army, among other grievances. The group has won a string of victories against the Congolese army in North Kivu province in recent weeks, dramatically increasing the territory under their control. Fresh advances prompted the UN peacekeeping mission there to increase its alert level and boost support for the Congolese army. The head of Luis Inacio Lula da Silva's transition picked a team to smooth the leftist's ascent to Brazil's presidency, while outgoing President Joe Bolsonaro remained uncharacteristically silent after his election loss. Lula's vice president-elect, Geraldo Alckmin, named a political council and a team of economists, among others, who will lay the groundwork for the changeover of government on 1st January. Lula will meet with the leaders of both chambers of Congress in Brasilia to discuss budget issues as he looks to implement his campaign promises of increased social spending while grappling with the struggling economy. Lula, who will be serving a third term as president, is facing a far tougher outlook than the commodities fueled boom he presided over in 2000s. The economics team appointed by Alckmin includes economists Andre Lara, 
Sandra Resende and Percio Arisa, who helped draw up a plan to halt hyperinflation in Brazil in the 90s. Meanwhile, Bolsonaro has all but disappeared from public view and even his beloved social media accounts. The far-right president responded to his defeat in the 30th October runoff election with nearly two days of silence as his supporters blocked highways in protest and urged the military to intervene to keep him in power. Bolsonaro has not posted to his usually bustling Twitter account since the runoff and he has even stopped giving his weekly live address on Facebook, one of the main communication channels he has relied on to speak to his base throughout his presidency. Lewandowski receives a second European Golden Shoe Award. Florian Nidal Lechner scored twice as lowly Augsburg twice came from behind to hold title chasing Union Berlin to a 2 all draw in the Bundesliga this morning. Union climbed to second in the table with 27 points from their 14 games. Four behind leaders Bayern Munich while struggling Augsburg moved four points clear of the relegation zone. Union opened the scoring on seven minutes with an excellent finish from Becker, who was played into space and were fewer chances in the second period. Union will feel aggrieved they did not get all three points. Giselman thundered a free kick against the crossbar. Polish striker Robert Lewandowski received his second consecutive European Golden Shoe for 2021-22 season. Now a Barcelona forward, Lewandowski scored 35 goals for his ex-club Bayern Munich in the 2021-22 German Bundesliga season to bag this prestigious award for a second time. The European Golden Shoe Award was given to the top scorer of the European leagues each season. The Barcelona player added the award to the Gerd Müller Trophy he was given at the recent 2022 Ballon d'Or Gala. Former Barcelona captain Carles Puyol presented the award to Lewandowski. He received the trophy after scoring 35 goals in the German Bundesliga last season for his previous club, Bayern Munich. Lewandowski scored seven more goals than Paris Saint-Germain's Kylian Mbappe, who finished second with 28 goals. Former Barcelona forward Lionel Messi, who currently plays for Paris Saint-Germain PSG, is still the record holder with six European Golden Shoe Awards. France coach Didier Deschamps included Raphael Varand in his World Cup squad on Wednesday despite the defender's recent injury problems, while the informed striker Olivia Giroud was also called up. Deschamps selected 25 of a possible 26 players for the tournament in Qatar, where France will attempt to become the first team to defend their World Cup title since Brazil in 1962. Hugo Loris. 11 members of the 2018 title-winning squad return, including captain Hugo Loris and reserve goalkeeper Steve Mandanda, along with Kylian Mbappe and Antoine Griezmann. Karim Benzema, who has missed a series of games for Real Madrid this season because of injury, is set for his first World Cup appearance since 2014. Paris Saint-Germain centre-back personnel Kim Bempe was pitched despite thigh and Achilles problems that have limited him to five appearances since the start of September. France will be in Group D in Qatar with Australia, Denmark and Tunisia. They will kick off their campaign against Australia on 22nd November at the Al Janoub Stadium. Moving on to tennis, Dominic Stricker booked his spot in the semi-finals of the next-gen ATP finals on Wednesday, following a thrilling five-set win over local favourite and second seed Lorenzo Musetti in Milan. 
the Swiss seventh seed who saw off Jack Draper in three tiebreak sets in his opening red group match prevailed 4-3, 4-3, 3-4-3-4-3 after two hours and 28 minutes. The 20-year-old striker who hit 20 aces during his win has yet to play a set that has not gone to a tiebreak in the tournament. Cheered on by the passionate home crowd, Musetti appeared to be on the verge of a comeback after saving a match point in the third set tiebreaker and going on to level the match. He also saved another match point in the final tiebreaker but hit a return wide on the next. Musetti is the highest seeded player for the year ending tournament for 21 in under players after Paris Masters champion Holger Rune withdrew to be an alternate for the ATP finals. Earlier, Draper downed Taiwan's winless Chun Hin Seng. 1-4, 4-2, 4-3, to back his first win of the tournament. Draper and Musetti face off on Thursday while Seng battle stricter in the last of the red group matches. The Ferrari in which Formula One legend Michael Schumacher won the 2003 World Championship title sold for more than $13 million at auction in Geneva. The previous record was held by another Schumacher-driven Ferrari, an F2001 model sold by Sotheby's in New York in 2017 for $7.5 million. The final price offered by an unidentified telephone bidder after a bidding war of more than 40 minutes far outstripped expectations with the auction house estimating pre-sale that the car would fetch up to 9.5 million Swiss francs. The auctioneer said the F2003 GA Chesis 229 is one of the most significant Formula One cars of all time. Schumacher raced nine times in the car winning five Grands Prix in the 2003 season and driving it when he clinched the title in Japan. He has not been seen in public since suffering serious injuries in skiing accident in 2013. The model was first brought in at the Spanish Grand Prix, the fifth race of the 2003 season. Chassis 229 is by far the most successful of the six F2003 gas that were built. Schumacher drove it to victory in Spain and also won the Austrian, Canadian, Italian and US Grands Prix in the car. The car powered Schumacher to his sixth F1 title, a total that saw the German overtake the five won by Argentina Tina's Juan Manuel Fangio in the 1950s. With that, we end today's updates at noon. In our top story, collaboration with other parties is to be decided by Barisan Nacional. Tune in to News at 10, coming up at 10 p.m. on my free view, Saluran Brita RTM Channel 123. Till then, Yang Sahih the RTM, hashtag MyPRU15. Thank you for watching. I'm Rene Fong. Have a pleasant afternoon.